Hey guys, how's it going? It's Margaret, and introduce yourselves, guys. Who's first? Oops. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, I'm Tanya. I'm with Thrifty Treasures. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen, and I'm with Vintage Dazzle. Hi, I'm Angie, uh, Dazzled by Vintage. And Karen and my shop name is so close to that. Isn't that funny? <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad that you could join us, Angie. Me too. We weren't, we weren't sure you were going to be able to, to come on this one, and but we we're for sure going to have another one. Um, so anyway, we are going to talk jewelry. We asked in our Facebook group, International League of Thrifters, uh, for some questions that people might have about jewelry. And, and we were talking behind the scenes a bit about how this is going to be sort of a broad, general Q&A, but um, we'll see about narrowing down for more focus in the future on jewelry, depending on where, where it goes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Ready? <laughs> I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> no? Okay. All right, so in the, <clears throat> in the Facebook group, the, one of the questions that came up was from Nellie, and she asked, do you pack it in a bag or box? Um, and then if you don't know the material or type of stone, how do you list it? Okay, so I guess to start, let's start with the first one. I guess if you're packaging it, how would you package to, to ship it out? I package everything in a box first. Yeah. What I do is um, I have that, you know that plate of uh, foam? I will rip a piece of that plate foam off and I will put my earrings or whatever in there and then roll it up and then tape it and then put tissue paper on it and a little sticker and stick it in one of those organza bags with my card and a little note. Oh, that's so fancy. <laughs> I'm not that pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have all the time in the world, so. It doesn't, right. you know, I just do stuff like that. That presentation's nice, though. How about you, Tony? Right. Um, I use these little eBay boxes. The uh, what are they? They're six by four by four. For stuff like you, you always say that might have something, a piece on it that might break. So I always use these boxes. They're like perfect size. Um, but if it's just like a, a chain link necklace or something, I probably put it in a padded uh, envelope mailer. Pardon me. <laughs> Every now and then I may mute myself. I have got this horrible cough. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Um, if it's something that's like flat or small that won't break off or doesn't have a, a stone or a backing that'll break, I'll put it in a, a little velvety pouch, you know, and pad it with a card in the padded. But otherwise, it goes in a 6x4x4 six by four by four for sure. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say, hey, there's a few people in the chat. looks like we have 15 people watching so far. Um, hey, Cindy and Fran. And Joni and Greg the Valley Picker is here. Great. <laughs> I recycle cracker boxes for jewelry. You do what? I recycle cracker boxes and cereal boxes for jewelry. And, and you shut them down. Because mm -hmm. I try to recycle as much as I can. Oh. Okay, so next question is also from Nellie. If you don't know the material or the type of stone, how do you list it? So let's see. Uh, uh, Karen, you want to start with that one? I, if I, I do as much research as I can, and if I can't figure out or don't know for sure, I just say this might be turquoise. I think it's turquoise, but I'm not 100% sure. I just up front tell them I don't know. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, how about you, Angie? The first thing I do is I try to find... Uh, the same or similar item on Etsy and uh, then I'll you know look and see what their description is and then I'll use Google and and then I'll go down a big rabbit trail and about an hour later I might get it listed <laughs> that's, exactly. what that's what you do too Karen isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> you know but you learn so much that way you do right? you really do and that, there's no getting around it. If you don't know your piece, that's just what you have to do. I mean, you can't, mm -hmm. unless you, you know, unless you just put it up there and don't put much of a description there. And I, I too, have said I, don't, I can't find this anywhere yeah. and I don't know the materials or something. I have done that, too, already. Yeah. yeah. But the more you know about something, probably the better price you can get. The more thorough your description, you know, you might have something that's really great, but if you don't know... You put a low price on it, so you're losing money if you don't find out. 
Yeah, yeah sure. sure. How about you, Tanya? Working days, I have done that before. Yeah. Um, well, if I don't know about a piece, I just ask Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. I go ask Karen. <laughs> But no, I do research, um, and I thought, I'm just totally stumped. Um, I usually go and ask Margaret, and she knows. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, just like what everybody else is, that's what I do. I just, you know, if I like, oh. if I don't know, I'll I'll put in as much info as I can, or I'll do a Google reverse search. You know, or I'll message Angie or Karen, or what do you think right. about this? I'll put up in one of the Facebook groups. What else do I do? You put that thing on Instagram. Was that jewelry or? Yeah, that pin. Yeah, that was a great idea. Yeah, I, I shared that pin at, in the Facebook group, and then I put it up on Instagram, and then somebody knew. It was like a guy's face, and it said something I couldn't read, and it ended up being in Russian, and it was this singer. And but so, Really? Yeah. I didn't like, know you got an answer on that. Too. I'm, I'm, I was just amazed that somebody knew what that was. It was. Oh, yeah. So you yeah use all your social media resources for sure you know on things like that oh. somebody will know you know maybe <laughs> hopefully but yeah I I agree just the same thing like put if you're not 100% sure because there was a lot of talk about pearls this week too like if there if you're not 100% sure you know make sure you say I think they're real you know but maybe and did you know what the um, the finished on the pearls, it's called Nacre, N-A-C-R-E, isn't that right, Karen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's tricky, too, because I know we're not talking about pearls yet. Somebody was saying, you know, rub them on your teeth, but if they're coated, then that would work, too, right? Well, the chances of you finding a natural pearl, you can't tell the difference between a natural and a cultured pearl without an x-ray, period. So... I just assume everything's a cultured pearl if it feels like a pearl on my teeth. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And you say if it feels like a pearl, that would be like if it felt like glass. If it, it's gritty. It's gritty. Like, gritty. like it has okay, a sandy that's good, feeling. That's you, the key. Once you try it, you can tell. Once okay. you get to tell the difference, then you'll know. Yeah, for sure. Because like a reg like a bead one is just like smooth. Just slides right over your teeth. Yeah, yeah but oh, it, it, it just like fingers on a chalkboard with the yeah. pearls on the teeth. It's oh like, gosh! Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, we just got off. <laughs> well, somebody asked that anyway. So, what, Tonda? Was there um, were there any anything in the chat that we want to jump on before we move on? Um, Dwayne says hi. These are some of my favorite ladies. <laughs> hi, Dwayne. Uh, <laughs> Jeff says uh, we are distracting his driving. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, okay. Um, Let's see what's next. Um, all right, Barbara wants to know, Barbara Colson, um, have you what have you found to be the best way to take pictures of your jewelry? She says we have horrible lighting and not very good natural lighting. Some of my jewelry pictures seem to always have a glare or a shadow. Do you do close-ups with a zoom on your phone or edit and crop later? Who wants to start on that one? Why don't we just go in the same order? Karen, you go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I don't have a, a very special setup. I just have um, a white piece of poster board, kind of curved, set up next to a window that doesn't. It gets indirect light, and um, I use a, a regular camera. I don't use my phone, and I edit in a an editing program before I put them on because that helps a lot being able to make them more contrasty and um, lighten them up and that kind of thing so yeah and, and sometimes if one place I'm shooting doesn't work I move to some other place and some other background and just try something different till I get what I want yeah, yeah. how about you Angie me too um, as you know pro maybe I don't know if you know but I have a lot of props that I use but uh, as far as the lighting goes, um, natural light. And, and I take uh, pictures with a really old camera that takes like four rechargeable batteries. So you know how old it is. <laughs> it's old like me. It's okay. <laughs> it works good, though. It's, it's a really I – can, I can capture some really good uh, images with it. So I'm happy with it. How about you, okay. Tanya? Um, I do the same. I use the white poster board, and sometimes I take pictures inside, sometimes outside in the sunlight, 
it just really depends on the piece, um, you know, and what it looks like. But I've, I've always wanted, I don't know if you guys have seen on like those jewelry boxes. Have you seen them on eBay? They're like $300. And it's a box and there's a whole bunch of, <clears throat> a whole bunch of light inside and has like a little bitty hole where you can take your picture. Have you seen these? No. Oh, yes, they're really pricey, and I've never actually bought one, but I'd love to have one. $300? I know, that's why I haven't bought one. <laughs> I got one of those fabric light boxes, but truthfully, it's kind of a lot of trouble to use, so I don't use it very much. Yeah, and this one here on eBay, you'll, I'll have to send you the link for it, and you can um, put it in your description box, Margaret, but it looks like a little box you would carry, like a little square box. and. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have my pop, I mean, I have my giant pop-up tent thing that I use sometimes, but then sometimes I do just grab, you know, like like they say, a piece of the poster board. I didn't, I'm sorry, my brain is a little sick this morning. I'm still sick. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, and then I do use my phone and then, you know, zoom in and edit on the, I edit after the fact when I need to. All right, any, any chats that we need to know before we move on? Uh, Dwayne says he just bought a jewelry jar, so this will definitely help him. <laughs> and um, let's see. Dwayne, real see. men love jewelry. Real, <laughs> real men buy jewelry jars. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, Cindy Roach says, exactly my question as Les eBay. Uh, I guess they're... Okay, well, let me just start with what Les eBay says. She says, scared of selling jewelry, what do you recommend to complete to a complete newbie who wants to get involved selling jewelry? And then Cindy Roach says, exactly my question is Les eBay magic. How do you know what to buy? Reference for getting started. How do you know how much to pay, etc.? So, good question. Sorry, Les. He's <laughs> <laughs> Um... That's it. okay. How about we go down the line again, Karen? Oh, how I just I I buy what I love. So if I don't really love a piece, I don't buy it. And if you really don't know what it is or how much it's worth, you just don't pay much for it. And that's where garage sales are handy because you can lots of times find jewelry for you know fifty cents a dollar. It's not much of a risk that way. But if something is pretty and sparkly and it has all its stones, you know you're going to be able to sell it for at least ten. So, you know, yeah. you're not taking that big of a risk. You just got to try things. Just try, buy things you like and try things out. How about you, Andy? What, what, what kind of advice would you get? Yeah, I agree. Don't be scared, for one thing. Uh, yeah, nothing to be scared of. But uh, I'm, I'm with Karen. I, I buy stuff. I, I look for the unique, too, that something mm. that's not just run of the mill that not everybody might have and that's why I stay away from like um, I have some Sarah Coventry and I you know I have some of the more common things but typically I don't buy them because there's too much of it out there um, mm -hmm. so I would go for uncommon uh, things that you think are cool that you would wear or things that uh, are vintage and were cool back in the day you know like old Hollywood you know, something that somebody would collect or, um, you know, just think it's cool in general. And, yes, have all its stones. I mean, there's some people that repair stuff, but um, for me, no. I If something doesn't have all its stones, I'm not getting it because um, I don't have any replacement stones, and I don't do that. It's um, terrible. So, yeah, it's, it's a choice, though. I mean, some people do repair their pieces, but, I do. <laughs> yeah, you do, Karen. Mm -hmm. I think that was it. Was that the, all she asked? I, can't I think so, yeah. Now. How about you, Tanya? What? Les is a guy, y'all. He's a dude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> His channel is just called Les eBay Magic. But anyway, oh, sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> Before we um, keep going, I'm a girl. <laughs> um, well, I would just say don't be scared. Jewelry is so much fun. And um, I would recommend, if you're a complete newbie at it, to buy your pieces at garage sales. Um, because, you know, like um, Karen said, you're going to get them for really cheap, 25 cents, 50 cents a dollar. Um, I would also look for, you know, pieces that are complete with all the stones. 
and also pieces that are signed. Um, if something signs, is signed, you stand to um, make a little bit more money off of it. And it's probably going to be, you know, maybe more collectible. Yeah, I agree. Um, one of the, oh, I can't remember who had the all the jewelry jars in the group this week, but she had dumped one out and there was like a pair. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, find like that unique, you know, item that is somebody's going to want, you know. If, yeah. if you're new, you know, find something that, I, I, to me, I don't get this, the fear. In it. Like, these guys will buy all this electronic stuff, take it home to see if it works. Then, like, to me, jewelry is way easier than electronics. <laughs> right? Right. Here's something I bought since we're, we're talking about. Like, this is not vintage or anything, but I just know, like, people, there are people that love nautical stuff. You right. know, so it's just like, that's a no-brainer. I got it for $2. and Yeah. You know, okay. it's... Same here. <laughs> Did you get something nautical? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> little starfish and but yeah, yeah it's it's not fine but like you said I know somebody will like it because it's nautical yeah I mean look for the unique like and I, I shared in the jewelry what was it that's their tall throw down with Jason I found these like King Tut earrings I mean they're just <laughs> wacky but somebody's gonna love it you know I mean that's if you're afraid of jumping in and you don't know try to find something that's got a kind of niche following you know yeah I think okay any any uh, questions in the chat before we move on? Um, let's see. You oh, I, I guess Dwayne's talking to somebody in the chat. Um, <laughs> no, I don't see any more questions. Cindy said something about can I direct my searches now in complete? It's Margaret. You have to hold me accountable for the cufflinks. Okay, I'll have to. We'll have to talk later because at the moment my brain is going what. Okay, next question. Um, Tony Ferreira Quinn <clears throat> in the group wants to know, do you look with a loop at garage sales or thrift stores, or do you just wing it? Karen, what about you? Loop. Definitely a loop. Loop it. Yep. How about you, Angie? Magnifying glass. <laughs> I have a loop, but you know what? I could never get it to work with my eyes. I don't know if it's my eyes or what it is, but... It just doesn't work for me. I, I use a little little magnifying glass. How about you, um, Tanya? I use the loop. Okay. Loopy. Yeah. Um, the magnifying the magnet, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I got one. I actually, I put it in one into the description. I got a loop for my keychain, so I can have it on my keychain. Because I'm always let's see it. it. Oh, let me get it. Yeah, I want to see it. Okay, it's Be over there. Whip it around your phone, though. The loop. Be careful with the magnet around the phone. Oh no, no, it's like a, it's like a loop, like a little. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said magnet. <laughs> there, there is a keychain magnifying glass. Let me, let me pull up the loop, and then I'll. Yeah. This one could go on my um. Uh, uh, key ring. Key if I put it on there. Here we. Uh oh, I think I lost the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So I'm going to screen share and I'll show you the loop. If Now I've lost you guys. There you are. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Uh, here it is. So here it is. Folding little loopy thing. That is so stinking cute. I want one. <laughs> that you can take. <clears throat> right, because I... Where am I? Here we go. I'm all the time like... I don't forget. I forget I have it with me. So sometimes I... Um, yeah, I, I don't have my loop with me sometimes. So, yeah. But what I'll do is if I don't if I don't have my loop, <clears throat> like I'll look on. So here's a pair that I didn't have my loop for. These little earrings. They were in a basket at um, the local charity shop. But I'll look at the post and I'll just see if I see any little scratches. It's kind of hard to tell on here. But I saw some little scratchings on there. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a chance on those. You know, because I didn't have my well, I had it with me, but I forgot to use it. Let's just say. <laughs> and were they gold? Yeah, they're ten karat gold. Sweet. And what'd yeah. you pay for them? Two bucks. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So if <clears throat> I mean, if you don't have your loop or forget that you have it with you, you know, that's my one of my tips is like look at the post and see. Right. If you see some kind of looks like scratches or lines. Not um, only that, I'll ask them. Like if I'm at Goodwill. Do you have a magnifying glass? <laughs> Do they usually have one? Yes. 
Nice. Good tip. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm forgetting something or left part of the question out. <laughs> are, are there any questions in the chat before I go on? So I feel like I'm just out of it today, you guys. Yeah. Um, am I echoing? Nope. Okay. Making ends meet ask, what is the determining factor on listing sterling silver under fashion jewelry versus the fine jewelry on eBay? Oh, what do you think about that, Karen? I, I, I almost never list jewelry on eBay. I always list it on Etsy, so I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not a good person to ask. Angie, do you list any of your jewelry on eBay? Not really. I mean... I guess I guess I do list a few pieces. If I know that it's not old enough for Etsy, I'll stick it up yeah. on eBay. Um, but yeah, I don't really know the answer to the question now. Sorry. <laughs> How about you, Tanya? Um, I would say if it has any markings on it, uh, like it says Stir or 925, I would definitely list it under Fine Jewelry. And if it doesn't have any of those marks, then you should probably put it under uh, the Fashion Jewelry. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of that. I mean, if it's sterling silver, you know, I would list it under the the fine because when I think of fashion, I think more of costume jewelry. Right, me too. Really. Um. Okay. Um. Somebody asked in the chat. Oh, not somebody. T. L. Treasures asked, "Are you ever uncomfortable pulling your loop out in front of people?" Nope. No. <laughs> no, me either. <laughs> you get used to it. Most of the time, they don't care. You know. Yeah, I've never had somebody ask me, what are you doing? <laughs> I guess before we go on, we should probably address this before. What are some of your, like, go-to tools that you use, you know, all the time when you're out there or when you bring your stuff home? Like, what kind of tools do you like to have on hand, Karen? Uh, well, I know somebody was asking about uh, test metal testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you just go on eBay, you can find a metal testing kit for super cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got a nice little box for yours. I just put mine in a box. But um, yeah, it's so easy to learn how to do it. You have a little stone that you scratch the jewelry on. You can't even see the mark on the jewelry. You put a drop of stuff on it and you see what color it turns. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anything else you like to use? Um, lots of magnifying glasses. Um, uh, I use a silver polishing cloth. But no, no kind of um, any kind of stuff like no cream or anything to polish silver just to get the dirt off. Um, I have a little toothbrush, like an old toothbrush that I use to get dirt and stuff around stones. Um, toothpicks, uh, little tiny screwdrivers, lots of scraping tools for getting gunk off of things. Um, nail polish remover for price tags. <laughs> That's what comes up. That's what I'm looking at on my desk, actually. Before before I jump to ask Angie about her tools, when it comes to polishing silver, do you leave it with the uh, tarnish on it, or do you polish it up and sell it polished? Um, I just polish it enough, really, to get the dirt off. Most things I will leave the tarnish on, unless it's just black, and then it's ugly. So right. then I will polish it. Okay, that's a good question. How about you, Angie? What are some of the tools you, you use frequently? Well, I want to ask Karen if she'll bring me her kit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, do, I have most of the same things, I would say. Um, I use alcohol a lot, you know, just to make sure things are clean and like earrings and whatnot, you know, the backs of them and um, a soft cloth and pretty much all the things she said. Right. And, oh, as in regards to um, cleaning my silver, I'm a shiny person, so I like, I always shine my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, a, it, it's just a preference, but I usually just make it as pretty as I can make it. And I know some people like it uh, with the patina on it, but. Right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I go back and forth. I think, I think like Karen said, unless it's just, it doesn't look right, you know. Yeah. Then, yeah. But I've spent time polishing stuff. I wish I had just saved that time of my life. <laughs> the number will get it back. <laughs> How about you, Tanya? What kind of tools do you use? Um, pretty much the same thing as you guys. The magnifying glass, 
um, the magnet. Oh, and sometimes I use like powder to tell if it's real gold. Um, oh. Do you ever do that, you guys? Uh, I don't know about that. Okay, so well, let me take my wedding ring off. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just put a little powder. Can you see here? Right here? Okay, so you just take the piece and you rub it and see how it turned a black color? Oh, ah. wow. Yeah. Cool, Tony. So, yeah, so that lets me know it's either gold or um, gold plated at least. You know, ah. a lot of times the gold stuff I rub with the powder. Um, if it's not stick, sticking to a magnet, of course I think, well, maybe it's real gold. Yeah. So, so then I'll grab my powder, and if it doesn't make a black mark, well, then I know, you know, ah. it's definitely not gold. So. Interesting. Is that like regular face powder or like baby powder? No, it's like some face powder I bought at the Dollar Tree. It's like <laughs> L.A. colors. I want to show you. So it's just regular. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some. I'm going to put that in my Google search right now so I can... Add that into our because in the in the group I have that resources thread going. I'm going to make a document. Yeah. Powder or gold. I'm going to put it in there. Okay, and then I'll find out more later to share. <laughs> okay, any um any more questions in the chat before we move on? Um, Kim Wynn asked, "Where do you get a high powered magnet?" Um, I got. Sorry, I'll go first, I guess. <laughs> one of mine came with a kit that I bought, and then I have, and then there's another one that I, um, you can just get it on Amazon or. Yeah, I think Margaret, uh, she linked this one in iLot, and it's like, I forget what it's called, but it's some kind of really high powered magnet. I mean, it's heavy duty. Yeah. Um, if you're going to be looking for the jewelry, I'd definitely get you a good magnet. Karen, where'd you get yours? I just found it at a, I don't know, it was in a box of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Angie? Kind of the same as Karen. Karen, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> My husband, uh, I asked him if he had any good magnets, and he came up with one that looked exactly like the one you have, Margaret. So I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably a jewelry magnet. So I use it, but it's it's really a heavy-duty one. So. Yeah, it needs to be a kind of strong one. I, I don't think refrigerator magnet's going to cut it. No, <laughs> that, that, no, it has to be something with power, yeah. Yeah, so I um, I have in the description, I have the one like Tanya's got, and then I think this one, because I bought like a whole kit that had all the gold testing stuff and the loop and the wet scale and the everything. Let's see yours, Karen. Hang on, let me. <laughs> Holy moly. It's enormous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you take that with you to garage sales? <laughs> that looks like one you'd see in a cartoon. Don't drop it on your foot, Karen. No. <laughs> Because, yeah, like, I, threw, this, I keep in my garage sale bag. I can't mm -hmm. imagine, like. <laughs> no, I don't take that one around. <laughs> Pull it out. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm going to cough again. We, we do have one more question. Okay. I think it was from the Joyful Reader, but I'm trying to scroll up, and it won't let me. Um, oh, goodness. Can you see it, Margaret? Oh, there it goes. Okay, she says, have you ever bought fine jewelry that was newer at a department stores when there's a huge sale slash Black Friday and then resell it on eBay? What are your thoughts on that? I never have. I have. Macy's has really good clearance sales. <laughs> but I haven't, I mean, I've got it, but haven't actually listed any of it yet. But um, that, those are my intentions. <laughs> Did I go out of turn? I'm sorry. No, I'm just thinking we're jewelry hoarders. I'm the same. Oh, we so much to jewelry. <laughs> Angie, how about you? Well, you know, I'm a vintage girl, so I don't buy the new stuff. Um, so no. But I have I have sniped off of uh, eBay and sold on Etsy. Oh, <laughs> that's good to know. Right. Yeah. Clever. That works for me a, a, a lot, so. Oh, excuse me. Okay, I, I lost my um, my spot on the questions in the chat, so here we go. Uh, okay, somebody asked about sites. I, I have a thread going in the, in the group about different sites for identifying stuff. Um, Deanna... I'm not sure how to say her last name, wants to know, 
I'm not familiar with the different types of stones. Wondering where to get the best information on, identif on identification. It's similar to a question we had before. How about mm -hmm. you, Karen? What do you do? You know a good site? Um, I go to let's see. I oh, rocktumbler.com. That's like more for semi, uh, you know, yeah. mineral type stones, okay. not the precious ones. <clears throat> Uh, and that's then, good because you come across that stuff a lot. Yeah, and then um, uh, Fire Mountain Gems, where you know crafters go there, they have a nice uh, resources area where they show some different looking uh, stones. So it, it, it's, it's hard. hard. Yeah, I just pulled I just pulled up one of theirs too for one of our other questions. Somebody had asked about finding out the difference between crystal and glass beads. And they had a nice article on that in there. I think they've, that's got a lot of really good resources on that Fire Mountain. How about you, Angie? Um, I don't. I'm gonna write down all these because I, <laughs> I didn't really have a place, you know, a specific place where I went to look. So yeah, that's good to know. Kanya? Um, well, I got this little book here at a garage sale. Mm -hmm. And so it's just got, <coughs> let me find a, that's not a good picture. I'm trying to find a good picture to show you all. But anyway, it just kind of shows you the different uh, gemstones and what they're called. And this helps me a lot um, if I have a piece that has a stone in it. So just maybe, maybe a book off of eBay so you can look at the pictures and become familiar with what the stones might be. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've, and I see books like that too at garage sales and thrift stores sometimes. Yeah. I mean that's a handy just pick up. Um, but yeah, I have in in our group I created a thread with all these different websites, but I think I'll make it into a document so it's easier to find. Yeah, and um, add those on there. Okay, now I've lost my thread again. Are there any questions or anybody in the chat we need to talk to before I move on? Yeah, uh, California Pickett has a good idea. He says to join a gem, like a gemstone Facebook group, and Ooh. they will answer all your questions. That's a good yeah. idea. Ah. That hey, is a good Drew. idea. Drew on here, huh? <laughs> Hello, Drew. Oh, goodness, I've lost the thread. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so Deanna also would like to know, oops, I'm presenting you. Um, how do you find someone reputable to look at your jewelry or to sell your gold and silver to? Um, and then there's an add-on to that question, but I'll ask that. I'll ask that part. So, how do you know somebody's reputable? Karen, you ever take care? I, <laughs> I I have a guy in my neighborhood. I don't know how reputable he is, but um, he's uh, he's helped me identify a few things, and uh, I have sold scrap to him. But I don't know how reputable he is. He just seems like a nice guy. <laughs> right. How about you, Andy? Um, I agree with Karen. I have a guy that I. Uh, go to at an antique store, and uh, uh, he helps me. But you know, I I just assume he's reputable. And sometimes I go to the mall, to the uh, to the jewelry stores down at the mall, and <coughs> check them out too. Right, Tanya. Um, I have a jewelry guy <laughs> uh, right down the road from my house. Um, I think he's also a Margaret's jewelry guy too. <laughs> <laughs> He's really easy on the eyes, so we like to go to the So how many of your jewelry guys are handsome? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's definitely a plus. I don't know if he's reputable, but he sure is easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th I mean, what I've done is, because I'll take, you know, I'll test it at home, and then I'll go and weigh it, you know, have my little scale thingy, and I'll wait, and then there's the gold calculator website where I can kind of type it in and kind of get a, a feel for <clears throat> going by what the uh, gold price is for that day, like how much it should be worth. So, right. like when we took it to Tall, Dark, and Handsome, <laughs> I I kind of had an idea of what the gold calculator said. Now the gold price had fallen a few, you know, it had been like three days before, so the price fluctuates. So then when he gave me a number of how much he was going to give me. You know, I was able to say, you know, this is what it came up when I looked it up. I mean, I think going in there too, not showing that you at least know a little bit about, you know, right, 
So, yeah, that's a good idea to do a little research before you go in. So, I mean, if it's way off, you know, like, okay, dude, what's up? Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. right. right uh, okay, there's a part B to this. Okay. Charles Tatum asks, when you sell your gold or silver, do you just throw the gold in one pile, silver in another, <clears throat> and let the buyer sort it out, or do you clean and sort it by carat ver sterling versus 925? Hmm. Karen, do you have an answer for that one? I, I don't do that much scrapping, so yeah. no, I don't really mess with it too much. Tanya? I have a whole bag of scrap. Um, all of this is sterling silver. Uh, I need to take to events and I mean I should probably try and list some of it, but it's just stuff I've found in jewelry jars over maybe the past year or two and I just keep adding to it. But um yeah. I'm waiting for our trip. We're gonna go see them soon, right? Yeah, yeah. Angie, how about you? Uh I don't do scrapping. Oh no. Okay. Well, yeah. Just just every once in a while. Yeah. I mean I guess to answer that it's I, I might separate it out by gold and silver, but I won't Separated that by this is ten carat and this is fourteen carat. He's gonna test it all anyway. I mean, right. he's not gonna take my word for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then I did get fussed at. I'm trying to remember who fussed at me in one of my other videos. Like, don't take your gold to the gold man anymore. Sell it on eBay. You'll get a better cut. But yeah. I like that. You know, bird in the hand. You know, better. Me too. <laughs> Any um questions in the chat before I move on? Um. Let's see. There was one, but then that. Let me see if I can scroll up. Okay, here we go. Dwayne asks, what do you do with all the items that are broken or not listable? And I guess he means like the items he's found in his jewelry jar. Um, what I do with them as craft, Dwayne, you should sell that on eBay like as a crafter's lot. You know, there are people looking for broken jewelry to craft with and to make things. So <laughs> that that would be my advice to you. <laughs> Yeah, I do the same thing. I craft with mine. Yeah. What do you make? Um, I make mosaics and multimedia weird sculptural pieces and stuff. That's awesome. I saw awesome. something in your shop lately, Karen, that was really intriguing that you made. I thought it was really neat. It had a fork and some beaded lace and I don't know what all was on was there. Was it a picture frame? Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Oh, okay. Um, I don't do that. Um, I'm not a crafting person, but um, I would sell it. I do uh, every once in a while. I'll sell a lot of uh, broken stuff for crafts so on eBay. So that's mm -hmm. how I get rid of mine. Yeah, I have a plan to do that, but I have just a pile right now. <laughs> <laughs> but Tony, you were talking about doing like a 50-pound lot of, you know? Yeah, and I am, and I could. I've got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Is there oh wait, is there more in the chat before I move on to our other questions? Um no, I think just people are talking back and forth with one another. Okay. Robin Kelly uh Birchall asks, I struggle with listing costume jewelry with no maker's mark. Any suggestions on how to list and what keywords to use for vintage jewelry with no maker's mark or truly identifiable characteristics such as bakelite, etc. I feel like we kind of answered this before with this with the stones that we weren't able to recognize. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe you have something different, Karen. Um, well, I like to try and make an educated guess of what decade it came from, and I will put that in the title: you know, 1960s, mid-century, um, gold tone, silver tone, because people are looking for a particular color. I put the colors of the stones. If it's um, figural, what you know, whether it's flowers or a person or a dog or whatever, because people collect those. Um, sometimes it's it's hard. You just have to use your imagination. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Angie? I agree with everything Karen said. Plus, that would be the time when you go and look for the item in a Google search and see if you can't come up with something that's similar to yours, and then just kind of. You know, bring in some of their keywords that they're using. Um, yeah, I, I do that a lot. I mean, it, it That's a, it's really helpful to look at other people's listings um, mm -hmm. and do you know 
you're taking a chance there. Now you you have to realize that hey, they might not know what they're talking about either. You know, I mean? <laughs> if it's something that's obvious that you see, um, say it says brutalist style or something like that, and you go, oh yeah, mine's like that. So you know, use that word. Or, but if you pulled up, you know, because I do that frequently, like I'll pull up five tabs, you know, I'll do that search and I'll, I'll like open up tabs of like five things that look similar to mine. And if I see the same keyword in all of them, then I kind of get an idea that that's probably the way I need to go. I'll keyword, I'll keyword harvest from other people. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Tanya? Um, I would just recommend playing up the piece. Um, was it gold tone, silver tone, and like... This piece here is signed, but I would say something about, you know, lady and playing golf or, you know, I would just try and describe the piece and, you know, what, what the piece is about. Something about those wiggly legs, too. Yeah, and that they move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Articulated. Yeah. Articulated. <laughs> Let's play a game, since this kind of goes along with this question. I have a piece. <laughs> that is not marked or signed. I don't know if it's vintage or not. I don't think it's vintage based on the but how like here it is. Oh. So what would you how would you describe that? Um it's a garland necklace. Like I would say garland. evening wear. Um it's Edwardian style. Beaded. Beaded, yeah. No, it's not really. Well, I guess yeah, dangles. Um uh, yeah. Would you say scalloped? I don't know. Is it kind yeah, of scalloped? Sort of. <laughs> sort of. I don't know. Uh, old, old Hollywood. Yeah, I'd use like you know evening, glamour. glamour, fancy, that kind of thing. Gothic, maybe. It does oh. have black. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, I thought that was fun. <laughs> Statement necklace. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's not vintage, but it's kind of got that vintage look, you know. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. Yeah. I like it. It is. <laughs> Yay, that was a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any um, any more questions in the chat? And I'll look over here while you're looking over there. Yeah, uh, California Pickens says, you gals know about the camera feature on Google search. I don't know what that is. Do I know about that? I don't think so. I do. What? He wants Reverse. to know about Reverse, oh, reverse image. Reverse image? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, nobody mentioned that, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. Uh, piece 3601 says, don't know if this was asked already, do jewelers uh, so accept gold-plated stuff? I've got a 14K pin. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. No. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> So here in the in the group, Don Rutledge asks, I would be interested in sourcing ideas for jewelry, also testing tools. We kind of talked about testing tools already. Uh, she takes hers to a jeweler that tests. Okay, but so sourcing ideas. So where are some places that you like to source jewelry? Karen, you want to start? Uh, my number one place is flea markets, but we have really good ones out here in California all year round. Uh, garage sales for the best prices. Um, I get no jewelry at thrift stores. I just don't have it here. Um, so yeah, pretty much garage sales and flea markets. That's it for me. How about you, Angie? Uh, well, I love the uh, retirement home thrift stores mm. because there you can surely find vintage jewelry. Because the ladies that have gone to assisted living. Uh, they're probably getting rid of their jewelry, and uh, I've found quite a few pieces there of, of uh, old costume jewelry. And um, we also have a flea market that has uh, like four buildings, and it's like literally five minutes from me. So um, I go there a lot, not a lot, but if I if I'm pretty hard up, you know, for something, I'll go there because it's not cheap over there. I mean. Normally, I like to pay under five for a piece, but I will pay up if it's something special. But um, yeah, thrift stores, um, the flea market, and garage sales and yard sales every once in a while if I can get up early enough. <laughs> I don't like I don't like fighting people that you know 
It makes me mad if I don't get there on time, and then I know that somebody already <laughs> went to the jewelry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Tanya? Um, the same. The thrift stores, garage sales, uh, and I've seen your video, Angie, with your retirement home thrift store. It looks really nice. I wish we had those down here. You don't have any retirement homes? With well, thrift store? well thrift I'm store. sure you have retirement homes. Oh, we need no, to start making some phone calls, Margaret. <laughs> you know what? I bet you do that you don't know because there's a lot of people that don't know about the one that I go to and uh, people around here that are sourcing and, they, and I'm like, I might let the cat out of the bag sometime, <laughs> but I don't know. I like having my own personal little thrift store shop to get into. Yeah, for sure. So, Tanya, if we find one, we can't tell Franklin and Jimmy John. Exactly. <laughs> no, no Franklin and Jimmy John. <laughs> oh, and I have one other thing that I forgot to mention. Don't overlook your friends or your friend's mothers. Um, just say, do you have old costume jewelry? And a lot of times, they'll, like I've had people just hand me a box and say, here, just take it. I don't want any money for it. And I'll find cool stuff. So, <coughs> yeah, ask your friends. Your mm -hmm. mother-in-law. Wow. Oh, yeah, my mother-in-law. That gravy train's just about come to an end. She's given me everything. Oh, come on, really? I'm yeah. so good at that. <laughs> yeah, she's given me everything she has. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it seems like every, like every other or every, almost every video. It's like I got this piece from my mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> but nice stuff, you know. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Lot. Okay, anything in the chat before I move on, Tanya? Um, I don't think so. There's just people giving uh, recommendations for some stuff. Yeah, mine yeah. are the same as as well. Like I mostly get my my thrift, you know, our thrift stores. Are, are they do okay, you know. There's a couple that do okay with their... I actually found some really nice stuff in the case. Usually at Goodwill I won't find a ton, but I found some nice pieces at the Goodwill the other the other day outside of a jewelry jar. So I was pretty wow. happy with that, yeah. And then the jewelry jar. Now we've gotten everybody on this like jewelry jar kick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun though. Okay. Jewelry jar is the new Pokemon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I like that. We would have put that on a shirt. Jimmy John Go. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's what I, as I've been sick, that's what I've been working on the last three days is just merch um. designs. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> you feel better. Me too. Ooh. Um, okay. We've kind of done this one. Denise, uh, Dennis and Alana Roberts, how do you tell the specific material like stone, rhinestone, composite, plastic, some of these I feel like we have the same answers on. How do you know if it's pot metal or alloy? What type of settings for stones can you use in your keyword descriptions? And how do you accurately... That's a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you make on that? I mean, I feel like it's the same kind of answer I've given before. What do you think, Karen? Um, sometimes I just don't know. Um, if it's a really quality-made piece, then you know it's not plastic stones. Um, I just call them rhinestones. Um, and uh, as for the metal, uh, I usually just say silver tone metal or white metal if I don't know exactly what it is. Um, mm -hmm. If it's metallic, it's probably more like pot metal. If it's not, it's probably more like a nickel alloy or something like that. But I'm not usually that specific about the metal. No, me either. I mean, I figure if people have allergies to different kinds of metals, they're going to be more careful as well. So, How about you, uh, Angie? I would say the same exact answer as Karen. I'm so glad I go after Karen. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that is, that, is, that is right, though. A lot of times I'll just say silver tone or, um, you know, I don't run across too much pot metal. Um, and if I did, I think I would know it, but. You know, yeah, you can always just put uh, silver tone or alloy or something like that down. Yeah, yeah. Tanya, how about you? Kind of same. Same here. Gold, gold tone, tone, silver tone. tone. I don't know the different metals. No, me either. I was actually just thinking about that. Like, what do you call this? I don't even know what this metal is. It's like gray. Is it gun metal? Gun yeah, metal? it's like a gun metal gray kind of color. It's not magnetic. Yeah. So it may be like a, that's a good keyword, that kind of. Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, so then the, Denise, uh, Dennis and Alana Roberts also asked, how do you accurately measure a necklace or bracelet? So 
I, let's start with like a necklace, like this type of necklace. How would you measure this to accurately give a, a length for it? Um, I just pull it on two ends. And uh, no, 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 I, I keep it latched and then I pull it on two ends. And then I have a measuring tape on my desk and I just fold it out and double whatever, whatever length it comes out to. So if this was like 10, then you would say 20. 20, yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. And a bracelet, I just usually measure the inside diameter of the bang, oh, you know, if it's a bangle or something. Right, so like from side, the diameter yeah. is this way, not yeah. trying to measure all the way around. Yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah, yeah, so diameter from here to here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do anything different, Ange? Angie? Um, no, that's pretty much it, but it's like say if it was like a two strand, like, like that necklace you have there. Uh, I would just measure the shortest part of it, you know, because some of it is hanging down. And then yeah. I, I would tell them how much, how far it hangs down yeah. with the beads and all that. And yeah. if I have something, I'll lay it down and, and I'll make sure that I put the tape inside where it's going to be fastened at. I mean, I don't go on, on beyond the, like, say it's a spring clasp. I don't go beyond that. I would go like right where it's going to be, right where the hook's going to go into it. That yeah. way I try to make it, you know, as accurate as I can get it. And then I'll measure, always measure the width. Well, not always, but, you know, if it's a wider piece, I'll measure the right. width too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Tanya? Then bring a big um, piece. I'll, I'll actually undo the class and I'll take the measurement. <coughs> I'll, I'll give them the measurement unclasp. And then I'll give them the measurement class. And then, like, if there's a pendant on it or something, I'll, you know, measure the pendant length as well and um, give that information. Like the drop or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm similar to all of that. <laughs> so, like Angie said, like, I'll make sure I'll, you know, I'll share the diameter. If, let's pretend like this is a bracelet, a cuff type. Bracelet. <laughs> you know, I'll measure the diameter like that, but then I'll also put the width of how wide it is here. So generally because when I was first learning I would I would try to like get the measuring tape inside you know oh my gosh I don't know what it's hard <laughs> I gave up I gave up on that okay anything and this is going by so fast I think we've got so many questions so we're going to have to have a part two for sure, for sure. are there any um, questions in the chat this um, is one that I know I grabbed something because I saw it in the in the group too uh, Bliss Life, is there a price point you normal you normally sell items for or you shoot for when you sell? Uh, these days I try to try to not list anything for less than fifteen dollars. Just because yeah. it takes so much time to list and you heard I already told you how long I take to research things sometimes and photographing. It just takes a long time. And I'm sure if I sell something at fifteen dollars even if I bought it for a quarter you know, it's still less than minimum wage I'm earning. So, um, right. 15 is, a, is, and I occasionally, if I just happen to have something, and sometimes I go lower, but usually not. Yeah. Ooh. How about um, you? Me? Mm -hmm. um, I tend to try to make it uh, like a couple times more than, than I paid for it, you know, so I can get like, you know, twice, like three times more than I paid for the item or something like that. But um, I'm like Karen. I have, there's stuff that, you know, has sat in my store. So I have marked it down just to, yeah. you know. But yeah. but nowadays, like she said, I'm, I'm going for the, the things that are a little bit, you know, better uh, in value. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. How about you, Tanya? Same thing. At least a minimum of 10 to $15 on an item. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. I have a few pieces that, you know, especially I got a lot of um, cuff bracelets, and so there were like three or four that were similar or the same, you know, and I think I may have listed them for ten ninety nine or eleven ninety nine, which is pretty, you know, inexpensive, but because I was I had like four of them, you know, mm -hmm. I could just do quantity. Yeah, of the listing takes less time if you have multiples, so you can justify it. <laughs> but I'm telling right. you, they've been sitting there for I think I've sold one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And um, Crafty Caregiver asked, do you use a ring sizer? I brought mine to show. I know, me yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I have one too. Over there, but yeah, I have one. You kind of have to if you're selling. I mean, yeah. if you find rings, because people to. are going to want to know the size. They want to know. Right. Yeah. So if you don't and have you can one, get them off eBay, they're cheap. I'm a big fan of buying the stuff off eBay. You can find it cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got yeah. mine on eBay too. Me too. I got mine at I, Hobby Lobby, I think. Hobby mm -hmm. Hobby Lobby sells ring sizers. Yeah, and they're jewelry. Oh yeah, they have all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they do have a lot of jewelry stuff. Wow. <laughs> Let me see yours up close, Margaret. It's purple. This is where my <laughs> this is where my jewelry acids actually accidentally Oops. got on there. Oh, oh. <laughs> so it will eat you up if you're not careful. That's cool. But I, I, have, I did put a link if you're interested in just ordering one off Amazon. I put a link down in the description box for that. Because, um, yeah, if you're selling jewelry, if you're selling rings, you can't yeah. just measure the diameter on a ring and tell them. Right. Tell somebody that. Um, anything else in the, in the chat before I look over? Uh, Bliss Live says, what would you say is your favorite piece of jewelry to find and sell? Bracelets, necklaces, earrings, rings. Uh, I love to find rings and have a blind, have a blind eye for earrings. <laughs> How about you, Karen? You want to go first? I, I love bracelets. I don't know. I just seem to do really well with bracelets. And I have a, I got a mannequin hand so I can photograph them on the hand. Nice. Better than, better than doing it on my hands because they're not <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> how about you, Angie? I sell a lot of earrings, and uh, rings would be my next favorite, and then bracelets and necklaces are my least. Yeah, favorite. yeah. Tanya? You know, I really don't have a, a favorite. I like it all. Yeah, I kind of. I'm looking down at my tables, like, because I just pulled out what I got from the store the other day, and most of it's earrings, but. Generally, I, I mean, the first thing I look for is men's cufflinks, so mm -hmm. I go in. Because those, I do really well with that, or I have, you know. Do you but have, do you have your good pieces that you found at Goodwill that weren't in a jar in front of you? No, I don't. Well, heck far. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I just grabbed, because I, I went to the charity shop and they had a bunch of stuff for two bucks, so I have that stuff in front of me. Um... But most of it's earrings, but I would say bracelets normally, if, as far as ladies' jewelry goes, bracelets. Yeah. yeah. Tanya, did you say heck fire? Heck fire. <laughs> <laughs> I get that from my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have, to, I'll have to bring up for, I'll bring it for next time. But um, do you guys have anything else you want to share in particular before we sign off? And I'll have to save all the other questions for next time. Oh, I don't know. Just I've had a really great time. This has been so fun, and uh, just uh, I still have so much to learn, and I am learning something new every day about jewelry, and uh, I love it. I just love it. Yeah, Andy. Me too. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, I'm so thankful that I. Uh, put off my appointment to my accountant. I mean, what's more important being on the show with you guys <laughs> than my accountant? I'm so glad right? you make it Yay. too. Oh, it's every time. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Tanya, how about you? Anything you want to share before we sign off? Yeah, so thanks for having me. I'm so glad that Karen and Angie joined us. Um, and I love jewelry too. <laughs> yeah, I, and I agree with them. I mean, you're just learning something new every day uh, yeah. as far as jewelry goes. You just can't know it all. Remember that, that brooch I just found like last week, the one with the horse that was the bridle button? Oh, I love that one. That? Anyway, it's just like red, and it turns out it used to be like a bridle button on a horse's bridle, and they turned it into to pins, like brooches. Oh, neat. Oh, I can't wait to see what you get for it. I've never mm. even seen such a thing. I had to I do a Google search. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Poor Margaret. I know. Feel better. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will. Okay, so we will definitely have to do another one because we only got through about half the questions <laughs> that were asked on the Facebook group. So I'm sure we'll have another one. Maybe I'll sort them out by specific topics and we can go in more specifically 
to attack things like that. So do, would you guys be interested in coming back to do another one? Yeah. Anytime. Sure. sure. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so you guys in the chat, or if you come watch later, if you want to find out when we're going to do another live jewelry Q&A or have any questions, um, join us on International League of Thrifters uh, so you can see when it's coming or ask your questions there. And uh, subscribe. And all of these ladies have channels. Why don't you tell them real quick what your YouTube channel is so they can follow you as well. Oh, um, it's Karen Lebo, but my show is Digging with Dirty Girl. <laughs> <laughs> And Angie? Treasured Vintage on YouTube. Tanya? Thrifty Treasures on YouTube. And I'll link everybody's channels in the description after the show. I'll come in and add them in there so you, you guys can go follow them as well. Okay, so thanks so much for watching and coming to see us live, you guys, or if you're watching this later. Thanks so Thank much. you, Margaret. Thank Hello. you. Bye, Margaret. Bye, Tanya. Bye, Karen. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>